everyone and welcome to another episode of Radiant Central and I'm your host Natasha St. Michael and thank you so much for joining me. So today I want to talk about pregnancy and morning sickness. Over the years, I, within sort of the, the natural health circle, I hear here and there people saying that if someone has morning sickness while they're pregnant, it's because they're very toxic. I've heard this a lot over the years, and then when I got pregnant and I had morning sickness throughout my entire pregnancy, all the way till three days after I gave birth, I was still throwing up every day. And I mentioned this in a few videos, and for mentioning that, I would receive emails from people telling me, oh, Natasha, you must have been very, very toxic to be having morning sickness all throughout your pregnancy. And I would get quite a few emails from people saying that. And I've always been a little bit shocked by that because in thinking about it, it doesn't make any sense. And, and this is something that I've, like over the years, it's always bothered me when someone would say that to either another pregnant person or just mention it in passing that if someone has warning sickness, they must be really toxic. Because pregnancy to me, and especially after I experienced pregnancy firsthand, is that pregnancy is almost like the last time in someone's life where they would be experiencing any kind of reaction to toxicity. It's a time in someone's life where their body is doing everything it can to ensure that the mother and the baby is safe and, and healthy, right? And it's not the time in someone's life that they're either releasing toxins in their bloodstream or, or detoxing anything. It's, it's kind of like when you get pregnant, your body immediately starts actually kind of holding on to things, right? I, I think most people who've been pregnant kind of have that feeling like that it's not the time in their life where they're releasing things. And usually what a detox reaction is or what they sometimes call like a healing crisis, is, is when the body's actually starting to release a lot of stuff at once and the body reacts badly to it. So it's kind of like when someone does like a juice fast or if someone's getting off of some sort of addictive or harmful substance, their body has a detox reaction to that because suddenly too much toxins or chemicals or bad stuff is being released into the bloodstream too quickly and the body has a negative reaction to it and that's why they start throwing up or having nausea or having a detox reactions. It's really because too much is being released at once and the body is adversely reacting to it. Now, the body is always, always detoxing itself, 24 hours a day, every second of the day. The body is working at detoxing itself because 24 hours a day, we are being exposed to toxins. You're exposed to it in your food, in the air, in the water, in, in things you touch, in things you put on your skin, and like all of that. <laughs> we live in sort of like a toxic soup. Even if you live in the most pristine environment, you are always in contact with some sort of toxin. But the one thing we want to do, because we live in sort of like a toxic soup and we are exposed to pesticides and chemicals and, and all sorts of crazy stuff in the air and, and within our food supply and in the water and in our, even in our clothes and the detergent and everything, <laughs> we want to keep that load down, right? Because the less we're exposed to it, then the less the body has to work at dealing with that and can do other things. But when someone's pregnant, it's kind of like the time in your life where the body's doing even extra to ensure that the, the fetus is safe and that the mother is safe. And that's, there's a few things that happen during pregnancy to ensure that. You know, one thing is, is that when someone is suddenly pregnant, is that their body starts producing a higher blood volume, right? I think most women, they're, when they're pregnant, their blood volume actually doubles and they also have more fluids going throughout their body. And that's a way of the body uh, nourishing itself, but also sort of diluting itself as well. And there's a saying that goes that nature's solution to pollution is dilution. And so the body is, has way more volume of fluids going through it in order to dilute a lot of things out. Another thing that happens when someone's pregnant is that they start storing more fat, right? And, and in, in one's fat is where a lot of toxins are stored. You know, if the body can't eliminate it, it's going to store it in the fat. And so the body's way of, let's say, dealing with a lot of toxins is to store an increase of fat, have an increase of fat to store those toxins if it can eliminate it. Because when you have fat that stores the toxins, it's keeping it away from your vital organs. And so when someone's pregnant, they do have an increase of fat. And, and that's not necessarily to store more toxins in that fat, but it's more the stores of extra fat is, is to store more energy, more fuel for the mother and for the baby, and also for 
later on for breastfeeding. But another, another thing that the fat does is, is stores any kind of toxic substance away from the mother's vital organs and away from the baby. And also you have to remember too, the baby is in a bubble. It's in uh, an amniotic sac, you know, filled with water and it's protected. And so the main thing is for, for the nine months of someone's pregnancy, their body is working hard to either eliminate toxins or to keep it away from the mother's vital organs and from the baby. So it's not the time where someone's detoxing. So when someone says that someone must be really toxic because they're having morning sickness and they're throwing up every day, it doesn't quite make sense because it's one time in your life where you're not gonna be detoxing as much as you normally do. Or if you do, it's gonna be in a very subtle and gentle way and your body's finding other ways of releasing those day-to-day -day things that you're exposed to as it does normally but you're not gonna be having major detox re reactions. And if you are, and if you are being exposed to a high amount of pollution and chemicals and stuff, then it's, you're not only gonna be having a reaction with morning sickness, there's gonna be other things that are gonna be affecting you and affecting the pregnancy. You know, and, and you would know if, if you're really in, in a toxic situation. So now let's talk a little bit about what can be causing that morning sickness. Right? So the first thing that I believe is, is causing morning sickness and is a strong reason why a lot of women have morning sickness is due to the hormone surges. Okay, like overnight when you get pregnant, your hormone levels are going up high, high, high every single day. They're doubling, they're tripling. And for some women, they're very sensitive to that. A lot of times I find that women that have either had reproductive issues in the past, like they've had endometriosis or polycystic ovarian syndrome, or they have fibroid cysts, or they have uh, reproductive cysts, any kind of issue that they've had in the past, or they've had really um, difficult periods or pain while they're ovulating, a lot of times that is evidence that they've had prior issues with either their reproductive system and therefore their hormones, that they could actually have more issues with having morning sickness and things like that when they're pregnant, just because they might be, like as it is, very sensitive to horm their hormone surges, and therefore when they're pregnant, it's, it's having really hardcore hormone surges, more so than what they're normally used to, and therefore they're even more sensitive to it. So the hormone surges. Also, um, someone's reproductive history, as I mentioned, and having any kind of reproductive illnesses or, or conditions. But also, too, if someone's had a prior history of having miscarriages, especially miscarriages that are close to that pregnancy, because that, too, it takes the body quite a while to adjust to a prior pregnancy or to a, a miscarriage. And if they get pregnant so quickly after having that, that, too, can affect the, the pregnancy and their hormones and ha have them have morning sickness, things like that. Another issue is the food they're eating, obviously. You know, it, it's if you're eating foods that, that are not agreeing with you, especially when, when you're pregnant, one thing that happens is things slow down and especially digestion, right? A lot of women complain of having constipation because suddenly when they get pregnant, their digestion totally slows down. And that reason why it slows down is the body's way of slowing the, the digestion, the assimilation of nutrients so that you get the most out of the food you're eating. And so for some women, if they're having a lot of constipation or issues with digestion, it's gonna start showing up even in, in their stomach or in, in acid reflux and nausea because it's kind of like if things are not coming out at the bottom, <laughs> they're gonna start coming up at the top and that means acid reflux and, and nausea and, and vomiting, things like that. So the whole digestion issue is all connected, you know, whether it's having problems down with the constipation or it's having problems with throwing up. And so the main thing is, is that you do want to be eating foods that are easy to digest and things that are not clogging up and things that are not causing any kind of acid reflux or any kind of issue. You want to be eating fresh, good quality foods and foods that are easy to digest. And sometimes that means eating super easy digestible foods. Like I know for myself, since I had the morning sickness my entire pregnancy, I was living off of homemade broths. You know, I had vegetable broth or bone broths, things like that. I was eating that every single day. And it was one thing that really, um, it nourished me and it really helped with my morning sickness. And I ate a lot of foods that were easily digestible. 
you know, that, that weren't have any sauces, that didn't have a lot of oils, just really simple, fresh, good foods. And that really did make a big difference, you know, but if, if one thing, if I was eating like a lot of starches and a lot of things that were hard to break down, that would cause digestive issues. So that's something to keep in mind too, is what are you eating? You know, is it, is it turning into glue in your body or is it going through your body and, and easy to, to process and, and eliminate? Another thing too is your body's structure. <laughs> if someone has, some people, some women have a long torso, some people have a short torso, some people when, the, when they're pregnant they're carrying low, some of them are carrying high, that too is going to affect morning sickness, especially on the, the, the later part of your pregnancy. If you're carrying high and you have a short torso, then the baby might be kind of squashed against some of your organs and, and against maybe your your stomach or making it difficult to breathe properly things like that and that too can definitely trigger morning sickness so sometimes it's just structurally how your your body is <laughs> that's affecting whether you're having morning sickness or not another thing too is your spine and the condition of your spine I find that if someone has any kind of prior history of having inflammation of the spine or slipped discs or scoliosis or anything that is affecting sort of the alignment of the spine or how strong the spine is, when they're pregnant because you're carrying such a heavy load in front of you, it throws the spine off it can, and it throws your posture off it, it, and that too can definitely affect morning sickness as well. So that's something to work on is, is having a strong spine before you get pregnant and if you're having morning sickness to see too. If, if having any kind of chiropractic adjustments or having any kind of acupressure or acupuncture can help with that. And doing some very gentle exercises to, to try and have a, a straight spine during your pregnancy can make a difference. Another thing too is um, stress. Stress is a big one. What you're thinking about and how you're breathing and all of that, all of that's connected. Like pregnancy is a beautiful time in someone's life, but it can also be a stressful time. It's, it's like both, <laughs> you know, it, it's, you're carrying a, a, a living being in you and you want to make sure that you're having a healthy pregnancy and that the baby's going to be okay. And that can be for some people very stressful, you know, or thinking about the future and finances or their relationship or their family or all of that. For some people, it, it's an exciting time. For other people, it can bring on worry. And if you worry, that too, it affects your breathing and therefore it can also give you nausea and, and vomiting and all of that. I know for myself, one thing that really helped with my morning sickness was doing hypnotherapy. Strangely enough, I, I found it was a lot of it was my breathing, you know, that if I was having shallow breathing, then I would start feeling nauseous and I'd start throwing up. But the moment I would be doing, I was doing Hypno Baby's home course, and the moment that I was doing that, I, I, those days I wouldn't be as sick as I would if I didn't do it. And I have to say, I wasn't as diligent as I wanted to be with it, and I really should have, because looking back in retrospect, it was one thing that helped me the most because listening to the hypnotherapy tapes or the audio programs, it just, it relaxed me and it helped me to do deep breathing. And therefore it's just, it relaxed my body and it just, it didn't bring things up. You know, it, it's, the breathing really has an effect on, on your digestion and on, on just your overall health. So those are things to think about. So back to the whole thing about morning sickness connected to being toxic. I 100% disagree on that. And yes, some people are overly exposed to pollution in a toxic environment or toxic food when they are pregnant, but their body is doing as much as it can to protect itself. And it's not therefore dumping that stuff out that you're having a reaction because of it. Um, the one thing I can say though, is that I would say after the pregnancy, after you've given birth, is maybe one of the times in someone's life where they feel the most toxic. I have so many women that reach out to me after they've given birth telling me that they feel really toxic, you know, because they're eliminating all that stuff they've been carrying for nine months, right? When you give birth, it's like suddenly you're releasing all the fluids and all the blood and, and the, the, the fat stores and all of that, you know, for the first few weeks after giving birth or even the first few months, your body is totally adjusting to that and the hormone levels coming down. And I even know for myself, I can feel that stuff coming out of my skin. <laughs> and I would say I felt really toxic after I gave birth, but not while I was pregnant. And, and after you give birth, yeah, you feel like that stuff's coming out, but you have to let that stuff come out on its own. It's not the time to be doing any kind of cleansing or any kind of fasting. It's really like pace yourself with allowing your body to eliminate that stuff because you don't want to be eliminating that stuff too fast or too quick. That's the time when you want to just let it 
take care of itself and you focus on being with your new baby. All right, so that's my view on the whole thing of toxicity and pregnancy. All right, so I am wishing you guys a super fabulous day and I'll see you again soon. Bye.